everyone, you're tuned into Music Box. Well, he's got a little bit of gospel and a whole lot of soul. But one thing's for sure, whatever he plays has got to be funky. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Cliff Beach. I could spend one hour with you Tell you all Welcome back to Music Box. Thanks again, Jacob Ryan, for your ever rocking, rocking music. Pretty good, huh? Oh, it was amazing. <laughs> Joining me on set now is Cliff Beach. Hey. Hey, Michelle. How are Thanks you? Thanks for coming. I'm great. How are you? I'm good, thank you. All right, so tell us about that first song that you performed. It's called Not So Simple. Oh, okay. Why isn't it so simple? It's Everything never. seems to be complicated with you. <laughs> <laughs> That's true. 
It's never simple uh, with relationships. And so I wrote that song, uh, that was for my first solo album. And it's about seven years old now, but uh, it was when I was doing more of a pop kind of sound. And basically it's about a guy in a relationship that's just trying to explain to his girl that uh, it's not so simple as people think. Like people think when you fall in love, it'll just be, it, when it happens, it happens. Oh, no, uh, no, no. <laughs> I've been married almost 12 years. Oh, wow. It is not so simple. <laughs> <laughs> no, it isn't. It isn't. Okay, so you grew up in D.C. I did. I was born and raised in Virginia. Okay. Virginia Beach, Virginia. <laughs> is my Virginia accent coming? Hey, y'all. How you doing? <laughs> A little bit. So how's the music scene over there? Is it, is it different from West Coast? East very, Coast versus West Coast. It's very different. It's very different. D.C. is kind of like a mini New York in a way. And I went to school in Boston as well. And so East Coast for me, it's a little faster paced. And I think people go out a lot more because of the mass transit. It's just easier to get around. L.A. music scene, though, is cool because we have such a laid back atmosphere with the beach people and that kind of thing that it just enables people to when they go out, they really want to have a good time. So, mm. it, you know, there's not one right or wrong so way. So what are you like, saying? You're saying East Coast is a little uppity? Uh, <laughs> I don't know. I mean, okay. I've definitely been out to, like, a venue that has, like, a strict dress code. Oh, that's true. They won't let you, you know. That's versus true. Versus L.A. where I can roll up in my sandals. And that, you know, if the club scene <laughs> is anything like a church scene. You're yeah. rolling up in there with a hat and exactly. a coat, a button-up shirt. <laughs> Here's you can just flip-flops, oh, cut yeah. off shorts. <laughs> no, I love it. I'm okay, so you started playing piano at five. I did. I um, did. Sang in choirs, mm -hmm. into gospel. Oh, what yeah. got you all into that? Oh, God. Well, it God, did. God, God, God. God got you in. <laughs> True. It's like the Blues Brothers. Like a light shined on me, and I was <laughs> like, I'm, I'm born to do this. No, it, it is kind of like that. When I was growing up, my mom said that God had, had told her to put me on piano lessons. All right, you went to Berkeley. I did. Tell me about your college experience. Oh my goodness. A lot it? of people <laughs> dream, musicians love. I mean, they want to go there, right? That's like yeah. the place to go. Oh, it's an amazing, amazing experience. I went there really young. I, I graduated high school at 16. Whoa. And I finished Berkeley at 19. So I was on the fast track when I was going Were to school. Were you one of those straight A students, skip a year? I was, I was. No I way, two wow. two years. How in the world did you skip two years? I went to school about 12 hours a day. <laughs> <laughs> you overachiever. By the way, Cliff rehearsed all his answers for my questions <laughs> before we started taping. He no. had me send me my, send him his, my questions ahead of time. You I little did. overachiever. I did. I am an overachiever. <laughs> you met your good friend Jennifer Knight. I did. At Berkeley. Yes. And you still perform with her. I do. I perform with her. And I've been co-writing with her as well. Uh, we've written a few songs uh, last year for her project. Uh, Jen and I went to, to school and we did musical theater club together. So we, at that time, we were wearing crazy outfits. All right, well, I think we have footage of you and Jennifer Knight performing. Oh, great. Yeah, let's take a look at that. All right. <laughs> Wow, you definitely have stage presence, and, and Jennifer also. I mean, tell me, tell me more about the kind of music that you guys do together. Yeah, well, she had her own singer-songwriter style. She was doing an acoustic thing, and so I knew her back You brought the funky into yeah, it. Yeah, Go I did. Boy. I said, I think you got some soul. <laughs> and I had heard her when we were doing Musical Theater Club. She really had a powerful voice, a really strong voice. And I was like, you're, you're kind of watering it down. I was like, I think you need to bring that up to the forefront and really show people that you have that. But sometimes people are afraid to do that because they don't want to be compared to someone. Like she doesn't want to be Adele or Amy Winehouse. So oh. she wants to do her own thing. Okay, so you went, to, um, you went out to sea for a little bit. Uh-huh. Uh, but not in the Navy. No. <laughs> <laughs> you were on Holland America Cruises. That's right. Tell us more about uh, the band you played with on Holland America. Oh, yeah. So that was a really good experience. So it was like I quit my job on a Wednesday and I flew out on a Friday. And oh, they wow. gave me a book this big of music and they were like, you got to go. You got to learn this? Yeah. <laughs> it's like, so I'm in there. I got to get, they hand me my life vest and then I shoot straight to the bandstand <laughs> and start playing Margaritaville. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god. I mean, because this is not usually the music that you usually no, play, right? No, it isn't. Okay. I mean, we played some stuff that was cool, some Motown, but most of it was a lot of Jimmy Buffett. Oh and Lord. I do not 
like Jimmy Buffett. But you did it. I did. I did. But <laughs> I will never, you'll never hear me do Margaritaville or Cheeseburger oh, really? in Paradise. Oh, I wanted you to play that later. Okay, well, let's go to break so we can get you ready for Margaritaville. Okay, <laughs> Just awesome. Kidding. Just kidding. But stay with us because when we return, we'll uh, talk to you more about your upcoming EP. Uh, we'll talk to Cliff more about his music and we'll talk to him about his band. And now for a musical interview. Aloha, we're on the beautiful island of Oahu. From beautiful beaches to scenic vistas to local entertainment. I see to hear. Hawaii's got it all. No wonder this place even attracts some of the biggest names in the music industry. So here we are with Rico Caruban. Rico is a production manager slash one of those guys for Ms. Lauren Hill, correct? Yes. So tell me, it takes a lot of work to set up for just one show. What all goes into that before the show? Oh boy. In a nutshell, don't tell us everything because I know it's a lot. <laughs> Basically, you have to advance the show, which is you have to call up the venue and find out what equipment they have show good for sound, for lighting, and also to make sure that the artist is comfortable at the venue. And there's good access, and there's, there's good security, and um, it, it's... But what people don't know is that even though the show may start at, say, 10, 11, you know, even midnight, you guys are there pretty much the whole day. You're there, like, from 11 a.m. throughout, correct? Right, sometimes earlier than that. Wow. All the way through. Wow. Do you think the artists appreciate what you guys do? Yes, I think so. <laughs> I think, but a lot of it goes unsung because they don't know exactly how much we really do. Because it is a lot of work, a lot of wires, a lot of electricity flowing through there. Yes. So That's how's the tour going? Are you holding up? Yeah, I'm holding up. I'm holding up. I'm going to take it out. You better be holding up. We're in Hawaii. That's right. <laughs> Oops. Didn't say that. Oh, sorry. That's fun also. That's fun. Yes. Margaritas? Well, yes, absolutely. Sounds good right now. By the pool. Let's go. Okay. <laughs> and we're back and in the studio with Cliff Beach. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, Margaritaville. Wasting <laughs> away. In, in Margaritaville. Margaritaville. Somebody give me a beer because I sound drunk. <laughs> Nibbling on sponge cake. <laughs> Woo! <laughs> All right, tell me how your music compares to, say, hip hop mm -hmm. and other genres of music. Yeah, that's a very good question, actually. My music, uh, I've coined a new phrase, I call it new funk. So it's like old school funk, but it incorporates, at least in the recording that we're doing now, a lot of new age sounds. Okay, so tell me how your music speaks to you, and how do you think it speaks to other people? It speaks to me because I, like, I'm trained in music, and I went to Berkeley, but for me, it's really about the feeling and the soul. It, you know, like, I, I'll do a show and maybe I don't hit every note perfectly, but you're going to feel it. You're going to go home saying, I felt something. And we're bringing fun back to music. The music is very fun. It's very catchy. It's very simple. Like, it's not... But it's going to move you. It's, it's going to move literally you. literally move you. It's going to move you and it's going to groove you. All right, so you write for other artists as well. Mm -hmm. Not You just don't write for yourself. That's Tell right. me about some of the other artists you write for. So currently, right now, I've been working with some friends. Uh, Luis Nariño has his own band, Noble Creatures, and uh, it's like a tropical rock reggae thing. I sing mm. and do uh, some backgrounds and, and lead vocals for that band. And so uh, we've written a few tunes together. The latest thing that I've been doing, actually, is writing music for uh, K-pop for South Korea. Okay, so tell us about MIB. Okay. Uh, MIB stands for? Most Incredible Busters. Most Incredible Busters. <laughs> they name themselves, you can tell. Interesting. <laughs> but they're a Korean singing group, yeah. and you wrote a song for them called Complicated. I did. So you went from not so simple for yourself yeah. to, to complicated. <laughs> <laughs> I did. Uh, tell us about MIB, tell us what they do, what kind of music is it? cool thing about them is uh, when I was writing that, it's a songwriting process where I'm just handed a track, and so it can become 
whatever you want it to be. It doesn't have a melody, it doesn't have a lyric. So that's up to me to listen to it and say that. And say. Okay, well, we have, we have a clip. Okay, let's roll. Yeah, you sent me a clip earlier. So what, what's this clip about? Actually, it's a complicated, right? Yeah, it's complicated. All right, it's, com it's very complicated. <laughs> let's watch that. Wow, Cliff. So the music does sound complicated. Yeah. <laughs> oh, tell me about writing for hip hop. It sounds more hip hop rap right. as opposed to the things that you normally do for yourself. Mm -hmm. So, what's the process like? What's the writing process? Is it a little different? It is very it's different. It is. It's like <laughs> you're. I, I'm always pushing myself to get better at, at my songwriting craft. And the cool thing is hip hop is not my style. Like I, I respect it, but I don't really listen to it. And I don't actually listen to much uh, you know, radio from today. I listen to a lot of old school stuff. So for me, it gets me totally out of my comfort zone. But it's cool because I can still try to add some of those elements in to the music that we're doing. What are mm -hmm. your future plans? OK, so I'm working on a new EP. Uh, which is slated to be done by summer. Uh, I'm going to release it around the time where I'm going to do, uh, going to be headlining at the Topanga Days Festival in Ooh, Topanga this year. Nice. So bringing my funk to Topanga with all the hippies. Let's and get stuff. funky with all yeah. the hippies. Yeah, but it's going to be a great sounding uh, album because uh, it has three different songs on it and they're all kind of different. I think it's going to show people the range of what the Cliff Beach experience really is. Yeah, let's talk about the Cliff Beach experience. What are we supposed to experience from the Cliff Beach experience? The main thing is that you're supposed to have fun. We're you supposed to get time. funky and have fun. Funky huh? and get down to uh -oh. some soul. But the cool thing about it, it has a lot of gospel influence, a lot of blues influences, and it has a lot of call and response. So at the live shows, you really get to be a part of the experience. I'm going to have people singing and dancing and hopping on stage and that kind of thing. Well, we're going to hear more music from the EP. Yes. And Margaritaville. Oh, maybe. <laughs> if you're lucky. After, After the break. <laughs> what Michael Jackson album had five chart-topping singles? A. Bad. B. Dangerous. C. Thriller. Or D. Off the Wall. Stay tuned to find out the correct answer. And we're back on stage with the Cliff Beach Experience. Yes. All right. So who do you have with you today? All right, I got Tony Hampton playing hey, Tony. the cajon on my left. I got Luis Nourinho. Noble right. Creature. Oh, yeah, from Noble Yay. Creatures fan. We have two superstars on set. <laughs> okay, so before we get to the second song, uh -huh. I want to go back to the first because okay. you actually sold Not So Simple, or you almost sold right. Not So Simple to mm -hmm. someone on American Idol. That's right. Uh, I had a friend, Greg Gordon, that was producing an album for Justin Guarini, who was the second runner-up to Kelly Clarkson on the first American Idol season. And I almost sold the song to him, but in the end, he went a different way. Mm, so he didn't want it. Well, he wanted it, but his album direction was different. I got you, but that's okay, because you got it. It's all you, and you oh, sing yeah. it beautifully. Thank you very much. Okay, this next song is called Delilah. That's right. Sounds like a nasty woman. Oh, she definitely mm. is. And All right, tell us about Delilah. Uh, well, it's originally based on the Samson and Delilah story from the Bible, where Delilah basically ruins Samson. So it's written from like the perspective of Samson, uh, his eyes. But in a modern day twist, uh, where we got a, a funky vibe to it, and just everyone can relate to it because they know someone that's in a relationship that might be bad or they may be themselves in a bad relationship, so it's just uh, a very accessible song that way. Okay. All right, Delilah. She must be a Jezebel. All right, Cliff, take it away. in 
What Michael Jackson album had five chart-topping singles? The correct answer is A, Bad. Michael Jackson's album Bad scored five top singles back in August of 1987. And now, back to Music Box. Whew, Delilah. Mm. Oh, mm -mm. man. She must have really messed with your head. I'm sorry, Cliff. But I still, at least you still have your hair. That's true. That's true. In my strength. <laughs> yes. In my eyesight. Oh, that, yes. That's very important. Okay. So this last song is called Sugar. Yes. Sugar. 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 Ooh. So you tell me about it. Sugar. Well, Sugar is the title track to my upcoming EP. I'm mm -hmm. doing three songs with Mr. Rocks, who's an amazing producer. And it's just going to be that quintessential funk dance jam mm -hmm. groove. Make you want to move. Yeah, you have to move. It's inescapable. All right. Well, thanks for being on the show. Thank you, Michelle. Yeah, and thank you for watching. Uh, that's it for Music Box. If you want to know more about Cliff, uh, look him up, uh, cliffbeachmusic.com, and also right. look for the EP, Sugar, coming out in? June. In June, on iTunes. All right. Cliff, the stage is yours.
Sugar, baby, sugar. 